Okay, I was going to show you pyrolytic graphite movement over a magnet. This, of course, is the one pole, and here's the other pole, and here's our dielectric inertial plane. This is pyrolytic graphite with a couple drops of water inside of a glass vial to keep it free floating, just simply due to the tension of water. So, I wonder which field's moving which way. Let's take a look at our pyrolytic graphite moving towards this pole getting clockwise movement. Dragging across the dielectric inertial plane counterclockwise. Let's take a look at that again. Clockwise counterclockwise. Now since a uh, uh, pyrolytic graphite is highly uh, diamagnetic, i.e. is repulsed to magnetism, the only correct way of viewing the direction of centrifugal spin is along neither pole but uh, the dielectric inertial plane. So we know we've got clockwise centrifugal here and counterclockwise there. Now if we turn on our pole here you'll notice something interesting and it's very easily explained. You'll notice I'm getting rotation opposite to the direction of movement. Remember Pyrolytic graphite is diamagnetic, but we're still getting spin along, of course, the maximum velocity of the centrifugal. But if I reverse direction, I will get reverse spin. If I go counterclockwise, I will get the clockwise spin of the pyrolytic graphite. If, however, I move the pyrolytic graphite clockwise, I will get counterclockwise movement from the pyrolytic graphite. The reason for that is extremely logical. It is always wanting to move opposite to any movement. Therefore, the only way you can actually see the correct movement using a diamagnetic material, extremely diamagnetic material like this, which will actually levitate over this magnet if uh, perfect conditions, although this isn't the best example of pyrolytic graphite, is by looking at it from the dielectric inertial plane. See, I'm getting clockwise movement here over the North Pole and counterclockwise over the south pole. Now, let's notice something else here. I've got this white for contrast since the graphite is a darker gray color. We already noticed the movement of high velocity along the centrifugal always moves opposite in a highly diamagnetic material opposite to the direction of movement, which is extremely logical. But, as you'll notice as I come over the centripetal point, it wants to jump over it like a speed bump. You see that? It comes right to the edge. The centripetal magnetism pushes it away. Every magnet, which is a diamagnetic object, which is electrified, has two field forces in it. Magnetism, reciprocating centrifugally and centripetally, and the dielectric inertial plane. Think of it as a gyroscopic flywheel, an electrical flywheel, however it's technically it's dielectric. So you have two field forces. You have a total of six field pressure zones. Two plus two plus two. Really one, but in a 360 degree movement in the creation of electricity, you're looking at the magnet this way, in a 360 degree movement in the creation of electrification across copper windings. So, you have two fields, in a 360 degree movement you have six field barriers. Centrifugal, centrifugal, this is in movement. Centripetal, likewise on the other side, and you have either side of the dielectric. But you have 10 pressure zones, entering centrifugal, leaving centrifugal, entering centripetal, entering centrifugal, leaving centri centrifugal, entering dielectric, leaving dielectric, entering centrifugal, leaving centrifugal, entering centripetal, leaving centripetal, entering centrifugal, leaving centrifugal, and lastly entering centripetal. So 2, 6, and 10. I hope you understood what I said here and download the book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, as you can see here. The correct way to see field reciprocation movement along the centrifugal divergent is only along the dielectric inertial plane using a diamagnetic material like the pyrolytic graphite here. You see I move it towards the north, I get clockwise, I move it across the dielectric inertial plane, 
you notice it can't make up its mind as I cross, then it moves counterclockwise. Let's look again. Clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. And along either pole, you will see that the pyrolytic graphite is opposed to any magnetism. That's why it's diamagnetic definitionally, extremely diamagnetic. Always moving opposite the direction of movement. I'm moving clockwise, therefore the di the, uh, the pyrolytic graphite is moving counterclockwise. And if I move counterclockwise, the pyrolytic graphite will, of course, move clockwise. And it never will stay like a steel ball, which is not electrified, an iron ball, excuse me. It will not ever stay in the centripetal zone. We have maximum terminal re-entering centripetal velocity at the center. The dielectric or an iron ball will never stay there. It's impossible, unless, of course, you tape it there. See that? Always wanting to jump across that returning centripetal flow at the dead center of the magnet. And maximum velocity is a centrifugal along this edge, which returns all the way to the other side, returns centripetally, and the centrifugal here does likewise, returns centripetally to the other side. I hope that was informative. I hope you understood everything. Remember to download Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. If you have any questions, I hope that was clear to you. You can buy this stuff on eBay if you like. It's rather inexpensive. However, the high-grade stuff is rather expensive. It's called Pyrolytic